The House Ethics Committee has reopened its investigation into Matt Gates, the Florida congressman who led the charge to remove Kevin McCarthy, a speaker. Since being forced to vacate the chair, Kevin McCarthy has used every opportunity he could find to call for Matt Gates's ethics probe to be reopened. At one point, McCarthy even suggested that Gates belongs in prison. The Ethics Committee, one day before the vote to expel George Santos, sent out an official request to speak to what is reportedly a very important witness. The investigation into Gates was opened back in 2021, where it was suggested that Matt Gates might have violated federal sex trafficking laws, possibly involving underage women. The ethics investigation has been hanging over Matt Gates's head and has been inactive ever since back in February when the Justice Department announced that it would not press charges against Matt Gates after looking into allegations that Gates might have violated the Mann Act. According to reports, the Department of Justice felt the witnesses willing to testify against Matt Gates were not credible. Now, between George Santos, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, and of course, Kevin McCarthy, a lot of us have lost sight of the fact that within the Republican caucus, Matt Gates is the most hated there isn't much you can get Republicans to agree on other than hating Matt Gates. Now, I said on yesterday's show, with McCarthy leaving before Christmas, George Santos gone, and Ohio Republican Congressman Bill Johnson set to resign sometime before March, the Republicans could be looking at a one-vote majority in the House, maybe by February. And then Santos' seat is expected to be flipped. It's going to go blue. It's going to be taken by a Democrat. So we're only halfway through the 118th Congress. By the way, some of you corrected me. And I don't know what I said. Uh, I'm pretty sure yesterday I said we are currently uh, we currently have the 118th Congress. I think that's what I said. Uh, and I think that's correct. The 118th Congress convened in January of this year and it will end in January of 2025. And I think I got that right. I think I called it the 118th Congress. I think I did. Maybe I didn't. What I think I got wrong is I referred to the previous Congress as the 116th Congress. It's the 117th Congress. So maybe I did, I was off. Anyway, I stand corrected. I don't even know what I said on yesterday's show. But it is currently, I think, the 118th Congress... And uh, the Congress before that would be 1 minus 118. My math is a little weak this morning. I think that would be 117. And then you double that, and you know how old America is. So I apologize for the confusion anyway. We're not even halfway through the 118th Congress. What do you think the odds are that Democrats end up with a majority sometime next year? I am hearing reports of infighting within the Republican caucus that borders on the cataclysmic. More and more Republicans are going to be heading for the door after the holidays. Now, do you remember when Jim Jordan was running for speaker? What was that, six weeks ago, two months ago? And all the death threats directed at Republican House members who wouldn't vote for him? 
Do you remember that? We forget. But there were, there were members of the Republican caucus who were getting death threats because they wouldn't vote for Jim Jordan for speaker. If it starts to look like Trump is going to be the nominee, I'm hearing there are a handful of Republicans in the House who are going to say, I'm out of here before spring for their own physical safety. A lot of Republicans say privately they don't feel safe. Their families are not safe, not only in Washington, D.C., but back home. And a lot of Republicans want out. Not good. Not good. So what happens? You get three or four Republicans who say, I can't take it anymore. I'm coming home. Then the Democrats have the majority. Does, does Hakeem Jeffries become speaker? What happens? Kevin McCarthy yesterday said he was endorsing Donald Trump for president and would consider taking a cabinet position if Trump offered him one that McCarthy felt was appropriate. Maybe you'd like to be ambassador to Douchebagia, the country of Douchebagia. I think that's the only appointment that would be appropriate for Kevin McCarthy in a Trump administration. It's incredible. It's incredible. McCarthy is leaving. He doesn't have to endorse Donald Trump. He could leave quietly, go take a job on K Street. But craven ambition always gets the best of Kevin McCarthy. Last week, we reported that after McCarthy lost the speakership, he called Donald Trump to find out why the former president didn't lobby for him. Didn't lobby for him the same way he did back in January when Trump helped to whip votes for McCarthy to win the speakership after 15 rounds. In their phone conversation, after Kevin McCarthy vacated the chair, he said, he said to Trump, why didn't you help me? And Trump reportedly accused Kevin McCarthy of being disloyal, telling McCarthy that, telling McCarthy that he had nine months as speaker to expunge Trump's two impeachments, but he didn't do it. That's why I didn't help you. And McCarthy reportedly screamed at the top of his lungs, go F yourself. And that's not the first time Kevin McCarthy screamed at Donald Trump. McCarthy reportedly yelled at Trump on January 6th while he was cowering from the insurrectionists. McCarthy got on the phone, told Trump to call off the attack dogs. And Trump reportedly said, apparently these people care more about the election being stolen than you do. And yet, Kevin McCarthy, knowing who Trump is, what he's capable of doing to this country, he's still endorsing Trump for president. Still endorsing Trump for president.